Hi, it's Tom here from FDS, and uh, today we are going to look at how to do a connector for a pack. Because I realised that lots and lots of modders go on about, yeah, just put a pack connector on and then you're good. And don't actually show you how to do them. So, I'm going to be using a Dean's, uh, Dean's connector today. This is a pattern Dean's connector. There are genuine ones which are available which are much more reliable, but this is only a tiny pack and it's not got a massive amount of draw, so I'm not worrying too much about that. Um, I've got the tools that you need for pack, but for changing the uh, connector on your pack, you need a good pair of wire trimmers. Um, I've got a set of wire strippers, and I like these, which are surgical forceps. I like them for holding things, like holding the battery connector while you work on it. And then I've got a pair of Dean's connectors, and I've got some heat shrink tubing. And um, I'm going to quickly go through other pack connectors, because I think that would be useful too. So I'm going to start with the old-fashioned versions. This is a Tamiya connector big ugly plastic thing and as you can see it has one side with a curve and one side with a square and the square side is usually positive the curved side is negative so that you can't put them around the wrong way these are not suitable for nerf use the Tamiya connector they're too low current and uh, especially if you're using at rated motors they will melt so if you have an airsoft type pack you may also have the Tamiya's little cousin the mini Tamiya I'm just going to clear a bit of space there you go this is a horrible green one and again this is um, the male side of the plug and again these are not suitable for Nerf. So we go into Nerf suitable connectors. Start with the most common one used by Hobby King which is this one which is the XT60. There's the male half, there's the female half and the female half is what goes on your pack. The female half always goes on the pack because you've then got no live protruding leads and you can see that the XT60 is shaped so that you again can't uh, put the polarities in correctly and it's also marked with the negative on the top and the positive on the bottom. So again, that's fairly idiot proof and that tells you what you need to know. Then we go to the XT60's little brother, which is the XT30. Again, this is a sub miniature connector. This is pretty pretty small. It's a little long. It's not as short as some other micro connectors, but um, these can hold fairly high current for their size. I think they're rated up to about 20, 30 amps. So they're not bad. And uh, again, gold plated, high current um, connector. And these are good for micro pack installs. And um, they're a good alternative to the Deans. And they're certainly more than capable of coping with most of the 2S um, and 130 type motors. Uh, and they're good in tight spaces. So they have the XT30, that is the female side, that's the male side. Then you have the micro Deans, which is again a simple. This one you can plug around the wrong way if you don't pay attention to your polarities. So always work on these as a pair. These are good for things like jumping across shell halves. Um, they're less useful for most Nerf applications. Although if you're running 2S stock motors, you might be able to use these for something. So for example, if you've got a demolisher and you're gonna run it on just two IMR batteries and you want to replace the connector across the shell halves, this is quite good. I also use these often for stampedes for the master arming switch if I'm using a FET. So that's those. And then we go on to the um, Traxxas connector. And the Traxxas connector is um, a very long, big connector, but again, has these nice flat, high current um, leads. And again, you can see, because one side's thicker than the other, you can't misconnect that. You don't see those very often because they're really only specific to those. The other thing you might find is JST connector. And you can see, here's a JST and those are those little tiny ones. There's the female end on the pack and the male end um, on here. And JST connectors are quite common in mini helicopters and on smaller RC vehicles, which is why you'll see them on some of these smaller packs. And they are thinking about moving over to an XT30 instead, so you might see some of those soon. So there's your common connect connector types. Now we're going to go straight into the install. There's a couple of safety rules to remember when working with LiPo. First of all, we do not heat the pack. Second of all, we keep sharps away from the pack. We do not go cutting downwards towards the pack like that because if you pierce the outer shell of the pack um, you go through and you can start self-oxidizing lipo fire and you don't ever poke lipos with sharp implements. The other thing is that there is, this is the balance lead this isn't this is for charging and it helps measure it helps the charger measure the current in the cells and get all the cells balanced together so there's two different um, cells in a 2s pack and uh, you've got a um, positive and a negative and then the other second positive to read the second shell and that just tells you that just tells you uh, what's going on in the pack so you don't need to worry about the balance lead the other thing you do need to worry about is never cut both wires at the same time i can't stress that enough do one at a time fully insulate it then do the second one. The reason for this is anyone who's seen Ghostbusters, the original, don't cross the streams. What you do not want to do for any reason is you don't want to touch these two together. Similarly, when you charge your LiPo, you will have this connector on the charger like that. 
and this connector on your pack like that. So if you are plugging in, you're safe because you're keeping the two polarities apart. Sometimes the end of your charge leads will terminate in banana connectors. Those you do not want to leave exposed because you can risk the run, run the risk of shorting your pack. So plug everything into your charger first until you've got just the connector, be it a Deans or an XT60. Don't leave any naked wire. So I can't stress that enough. Keep away from naked wires. So I'm going to start by cutting the uh, negative lead. And I'm going to save that JST connector, sometimes they're useful. And then I'm going to strip it with the wire strippers, like that. Just apply a little bit of separate flux. I'm using a very, very bad flex at the moment because my regular flex has run out and I'm being tight. I don't want to go and spend some money on flux on flex just for one job. So I'm just going to tin the lead. So what you do is, obviously I've stripped away the insulation now and exposed the wires. When I tin the wire, what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of solder onto the uh, onto the wire and just put it on the end and it'll just suck it up and you just get a little bit of silver into the wire and that just gives me something else to connect to and then I will do the same. So your pack connector should always be the female. Now if you look carefully, I don't know whether you guys are going to be able to see this, but there's a little legend on here with the polarities on, plus bottom flat peg, negative top vertical peg. So if you've got a Dean's connector without a marking on, it's probably a fake, but if you are stuck with that, that should be your positive and that should be your negative. And remember, when you wire your blaster, make sure you do it the same way. So we'll go with the pack connector now. I'm just gonna put a little bit of solder onto the pack connector too, because I like doing that, just to tin the contacts. If you haven't got separate flux, it's very well worth cleaning these quickly with a scratch pencil, which is, or a very, very fine emery paper. Just helps the solder to adhere. Now, obviously my soldering technique's probably a bit random. If you want to learn to solder, go look at somebody else's. Let's put a bit of solder on there. Nice little light colouring, nice and shiny. Right, here's where your holding hands tool comes in. So what you're going to do is I'm going to attach the negative first. Then you will need a little bit of heat shrink tubing, right? You can't skimp on insulating with LiPo, and certainly not even with um, nickel metal hydride packs, any form of pack you need a good insulator. This is heat shrink tubing, it starts fat and then it goes thin as it shrinks, hence the name. So what we do is we slip a bit of that over the end. You can't use hot glue, you can't use crappy E-tape, you can't replace that with anything. Spend the pence or cents, if you live in America, for what it costs to buy the uh, heat shrink and buy some. That's not a, that's not a would be nice item, that's an essential item. So if you don't have the stuff to do your mod, wait a couple of days and order the correct materials. That way you get a job that lasts and you don't hurt yourself or somebody else or burn your house down or do something stupid. So think first, have the tools on hand to do the job. Now you do need 25 watts or more to apply to this because you need to get plenty of heat into the end of the wire. The thicker your wire is, the longer you've got to get it hot. And you're waiting for the solder to liquefy and go shiny if you're using a leaded solder. If you're using a lead free solder, you won't get the shine, but you should get a really good liquidy join I'll just lift that up and you can see there that's a nice solid join and it's joined really tight. If you can just pull at it and it comes off it's no good. So now we're going to put the insulation over that joint and then I'm just going to use a heat source just to shrink that back. You can use a hot air gun if you've got one, hair dryer or whatever. I just use one of those uh, long lighters and you can see that that's now fully insulated and there is no way that I can touch the red wire onto the black wire so we're still safe and now I can cut the red wire so I haven't touched that red wire until this point which is as it should so remember one wire at a time fully insulate so I'm going to do the positive now just set it up and you can see I've put my heat shrink on there and I've tinned the end again solid connection and then shrink it up okay so if anything that's actually easier with things like the XT60 where it's just you've got a little groove for the wire and again you just tin in there and then you slot your wire in and uh, away you go so there you go there's a Dean's connector soldered on your um, pack